reading this morning is from Luke chapter 21, verses 5 to 19. And in a cold call he wasn't expecting at all, I've asked John to read the scripture. Good morning. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near, do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful potents and great signs from heaven. But before all of this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for it will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Justice would drop away and God's righteousness and loving kindness would be the norm. That we would absolutely need to learn a new song because the world itself would be new. But Jesus also spoke about what would come before that ending. For Luke in particular, who wrote both today's gospel and the book of Acts, the key thing was to focus not on the end or the end, but on the way. How the number of people walking in the way of Jesus Christ would grow before the coming of the kingdom. God, Luke thought it was important to emphasize, yes, the end is coming. But our role is to walk in the way. And that intermediate action would affect what happened when the kingdom arrived. We couldn't do anything about the end of the world. That was in God's hands. But we could live as Jesus taught us to live. And that would make a difference. Now, we have all of us had those medical tests 
that require us to come back for a follow-up. And no matter how quickly they schedule that follow-up, there is still that space. That space to wonder if everything is going to be different in a few hours or a few days. Is the cholesterol really that high? Is it just a shadow on the image? You know, we're in that space where the path forward isn't clear, and it isn't in our hands, and it isn't what we thought was going to, the way that we were going to move forward, even yesterday. Today's reading from Luke talks about being in that space before the end, and Jesus says it's not going to be pretty. There are going to be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. And that's before it gets personal. They will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors. And the people who should absolutely have your back are going to be part of the mob that is taking you down. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Jesus is calling us to live in the real world. And the real world has horrible things in it that are doing horrible things to innocent people. I know people think that we church people can be happy, clappy, pink clouds and unicorn people. But listen to what Jesus has taught. That it's all going to be an unholy mess before it gets better. And I don't see how the pink clouds last for very long. That's why he's reminding us to walk in the way. To keep telling the truth about the kingdom of God. To keep telling the truth about the mess the world is in when the world is in a heck of a mess. I am so impressed by the donation we were able to make as a community to the food pantries here in Brookline and Nashua. I just want to look, what's the number, Amy? 2,300? 2,320, approximately. <laughs> approximately, food items, $600 in gift cards. I mean, look, we're going to full house today. Look at what you were able to do with the help of the community, with the help of the take-home meal people, with the help of senior luncheon. I am so totally impressed by that. And I am so totally discouraged that it is necessary, that it is needed. But that is walking in the way. That is telling the truth about a problem in this world, not just by saying, whoa, you know, hunger, not so good. But by saying, how can I help? Even knowing that the problem is way bigger than anything I can do. And walking in the way is also telling the truth about that donation. It won't be enough. It frightens us. Because it makes us remember the times when our parents had to go to the food pantry. When we had to go to the food pantry for our children. It reminds us of the times when our parents couldn't face going to the food pantry. And we went hungry. And weren't allowed to tell anyone about it. We look at that donation and it makes us wonder about just how far we are from needing to go and ask for help. Or how close our kids and our grandkids are. Some of us are planning meals for Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving week when we will have company from out of town. And we want there to be plenty of favorite recipes and special desserts and something fun to try with the drinks in the evening. And our donation to the food pantry makes us feel uneasy in the back of our mind. 
because it tells us flat out that there are families who are hoping they have enough Cheerios for tomorrow. And that is walking in the way too. We see a need and we acknowledge it. Even saying that we wish there wasn't that need. We respond to the need as best we can. Even saying that isn't enough. And we acknowledge that there but for the grace of God we all go. Even though that makes us all uncomfortable. Because in the end, all those Cheerios and diapers and goldfish are going to make a difference to someone. A great difference. And that is worth all the discomfort we feel times a million. So we can speak the truth about all of it. How glad we are to do it. How sad we are that it needs to be done at all. How uncomfortable. It makes us. In this week, as we are heading towards the end of our stewardship campaign, when we are asking folks to get their pledge forms in so we can present a balanced budget in January, as we are required to do, I want to point out something else that may be harder to see in today's reading. Jesus speaks of earthquakes and plagues and portents and signs. And we look at the news. <coughs> And we can see all of those things, and more. So I want right now to ask everyone to silently pray for all the unknown people around the world who are caught in that space where the path forward is not clear, where the path forward is not in their hands, and isn't what they thought it was going to be even yesterday. Please join me in prayer. And now let me say this. Every week when we gather, 20 or 30 of us in the sanctuary on a Sunday, 10 of us in the kitchen for a take-home meal, 50 of us at the senior luncheon, two of us dropping off carloads full of food pantry donations. Every week when we gather, someone is in that space where all they know are the earthquakes in their life. All they know is the shadow on the x-ray. All they know is that the Cheerios box can only handle one more school day. We don't usually know who that person is, but in every gathering, there is someone who is in that space. And they need a place to come. They need a place to come where they can speak the truth about how awful that space is. They need a place to come where the people around them respond by saying, that space is awful. Even when we all want to pretend that it doesn't even exist. They need a place to come where they can be reminded that not a hair on their head will perish. That God is watching over them. They need a place to come where they can remind others that by your endurance, you will gain your souls. That's what we're stewarding. The kind of place and the kind of people who create a space for telling truth and for enduring that truth, surrounded by loving kindness and the right relationship with Amen. 
So for today's hymn after the sermon, <coughs> I just love, this was one of the many wonderful songs that, that Ifan found for the Fight the Good Fight week, and I couldn't use it, so I'm like, this week we're getting the Fight the Good Fight song. Fight the Good Fight by Coinane. <laughs> 